Mr. Sarah, we're almost done this crossword. I know. Okay, ready? 5E. It says it starts with a G, okay. ends with an E, mm -hmm. and it's four letters. Okay. Glue. No, the clue says something you open. Something you open. Mm, starts with G. Yeah. Four letters, ends with E. Oh, look, it has a T at the end. So it's G oh, something T. -E. I think I know. Is it gate? Could it oh, be that's gate? Perfect. Gates gate. open. Gate. Okay, okay, now 7L mm -hmm. is, it's got K, E, E, blank, E, R. Hmm. K, E, E, blank, E, R. And it says B, blank. Like B, E, E? Yeah. Like B. Oh, uh, I know. It's beekeeper. Great. Yeah, we it has to be. finished it. That's cool. That's amazing. So, gatekeeper. Gatekeeper. Yeah, I heard that was the theme. Oh, okay. For today. The gatekeeper. Mm. I wonder what that's about. Mm. I guess we'll find out. I guess we will. Hey, kids. Did you see what those ladies were doing in the park? The crossword? Yeah, their word was gatekeeper. And you know, I'm a gatekeeper too, eh? Yes, I'm a police officer. So, I come and I see who's going into the city and who's going out to the city. I'm always looking to see, hey, are you a good guy or a bad guy? And those ladies, they're talking about the same thing in prayer. But <laughs> what do I know about prayer? Eh? Hi, Timothy, how are you? Oh, hi, Jenny. I'm so glad you joined me today. Thank you. I was just playing with my block. Yes. And I was making a big, big tower. Uh -huh. And I'm going to stand on the tower and I'm going to see everything. Wow. Well, today I was talking all about being a gatekeeper with uh -huh. some of the kids. Yeah. And you know, a gatekeeper is someone who would stand on a tall tower and look out. <gasps> To protect the gate into the palace. So, so our building blocks to be a gatekeeper? Sure. Wow. But do you know who was an amazing, famous gatekeeper? Oh, let me get Jesus. Nope. Uh, Moses. Nope. <laughs> I didn't need two kinds. It's me, Timothy. Well, maybe it is. <gasps> because everyone who loves God has the opportunity to be a gatekeeper. <laughs> but what it means to be is to stand before God in prayer. Mm. But can I tell you a story in the Bible? Yeah, I love story, Penny. About a famous gatekeeper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is Mordecai. Mordecai. That's right, very good. <laughs> now, Mordecai is found in the book of Esther. Esther. And Esther was a very famous queen, oh, yeah. but she was also raised by Mordecai. Oh, did she live in England? Oh, she lived a long, long time ago oh. in the Middle East, and the king, his name was Xerxes. Oh. I'm not going to pronounce that one because I don't even think I know how to do that. No, and I don't even know if I said it right either. <laughs> but it was a long, long time ago, even before the days of Jesus. Oh. But Mordecai, he was a Jew. But a long time ago, Mordecai was sitting in a gate. I know. Sitting? I know. In a gate? Yes, and you know, can I read it to you? Yes, yes, yes. Please. Okay, it's in Esther... 221. It says, In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, that means two of the guards, okay. named Big Than and Teresh, they kept the door of the king. They were gatekeepers. They were mad. Oh. And they sought to hurt the king. Okay, okay. So, Mordecai was the gatekeeper before Jesus. Yep. And there's big guy and tarnish and he did mad. Right. So these two guys were mad at the king, but they started to whisper in front of Mordecai that they were going to hurt the king. 
That's so mean. Yeah, number one, you don't whisper unless you're in the library. Right. And because you're telling secrets and secrets are bad. Right. And then and then they say go hurt the king. That's so bad. Yes, but you know what Mordecai did? What? When Mordecai found this out, it says that Mordecai told Esther the queen. Ah, uh, okay, so he, he, he told Esther the queen because she could do something because she's the queen. That's right, and it was also the, the, the girl that he raised, right? So yeah, he yeah. knew her, and then the queen told the king. Mm. And that was the end of those bad guys. Oh, they got in trouble. <laughs> that's right. But that's not the end of the story. No? No, because when you go to Esther chapter 6, okay, this is the coolest part. So it was a very bad time in the history for the Jews because mm. there was another super bad guy named Haman, and he wanted all the Jews to die. Hey, man, that's not nice. No, it wasn't. And so he was working for the king. Oh, boy. But Mordecai got the news to <gasps> Esther, and Esther called a fast. Oh, okay, so she, she was like, everybody, we got a one fast away because Haman tried to kill us. Yes, normally people don't do that, but this was a special occasion because all the Jewish people's lives were in danger. How, how, how is no drinking? and no eating gonna help them. Well, if they were just not drinking and not eating, that wouldn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But the whole time they weren't drinking and they weren't eating, they were praying to God, asking ah. God to spare the people. Oh, so they have to pray too. Yeah, they were praying big time, because guess what happened? <laughs> what happened in Esther? was allowed to go before the king. Mm -hmm. And even though that was super dangerous because you weren't allowed to go to the king without permission, the king extended his scepter. Remember a few weeks ago? Yeah. We made scepters? Yeah, it was a sparkly stick. Yeah, yeah, it was very cool. So the king extended his scepter and Esther was able to come in and she invited the king and bad guy Haman mm. to a banquet. Uh so, so she could talk to the king. And so they had to go to the bank. No, a banquet is like a big, big, big supper party with lots and lots and lots of food. Uh, but they weren't eating. That must have been so hot. Well, the king was eating because he wasn't Jewish and he uh. didn't know about the fast that Esther uh, okay, called. Okay, okay. So everybody was eating, not Esther. Mm. And then guess what happened that night? Esther was able to eat something. No, in fact, oh. everyone was still praying and not eating and not drinking. And then that night, the same night that all the Jews all over the world pretty much at that time were praying, that king who was in charge of everybody, he couldn't sleep. Because he ate too much food at the banquet. Well, maybe. I think God was helping keep him awake because this is what happened. Oh. In chapter six of Esther, but that night the king could not sleep and he called for the book of the records of Chronicles to be read to him. And all of a sudden he asked the question. Uh, Esther, do you want some chicken? Because I know you're hungry. Nope. He heard about how Mordecai had told the queen about this plot to oh, yeah, hurt that the king. Thing, that thing. Yes, 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 yes. And he asked this question. Hmm. What has been done to give dignity and honor to Mordecai? Because uh, Mordecai, because he heard the whispers and wanted to kind of save the king's life. Exactly. Mordecai was a good gatekeeper because he sat in the king's gate and then he reported to the king the danger, and so he really showed that he was the king's friend. But the king had not done anything for Mordecai. Oh, he didn't even give him a tweet or candy or a pat on the back saying, thank you for telling me so I don't die. Exactly, but guess what? What? It's a kind of funny story because the king asked that question and everyone said no one did anything. So he said, who's in my court right now? I need someone to do a job for me. Hmm. And guess who was in the court? I don't know, Jenny, who was in the court? It was the bad guy, Haman. <coughs> yes, 
The bad guy Haman was so mad at Mordecai, because Mordecai wouldn't bow to him, Ooh. that he was planning to kill Mordecai. What? I know, this is quite a story. This is scary. I know, I'm sorry. Sometimes the Bible has some pretty scary stories in it, no. but it's always teaching us. I don't know. So guess what happened? Bad guy Haman came in before the king, and the king said, what would you do if you really want to show someone that you're proud of them and that you honor them and that they're important to you? That's basically what the king asked. You give them candy and you give them five more minutes of TV and and you give them, uh, uh, you take them to the zoo. Well, that would be what you do, Timothy. But Haman, he really wanted to feel special. Mm -hmm. So he told the king, well, I think you should take clothes that you've already worn and get the king's horse and a golden crown and put it on that man and parade him through the city saying, this is how the king treats those who honor him. Well, wow, that's a big show, Jenny. I know, it was an amazing show. In fact, I just want to see that it said, proclaim before, thus shall it be done to the man who the king delights to honor. Wow. <laughs> I know. That's, that's a different language that I don't understand. But wow. But what it said is that he paraded, he, he was going to parade the person mm -hmm, through the mm -hmm, town mm -hmm. and shout out, anyone, look up, because this is how the king treats his friends. Wow. But guess what? Haman thought the king was going to do this for Haman. <laughs> so he's like, this is all that should be done. <laughs> so then a big shocker came to bad guy Haman. Yeah, because you waited for him. I know, because Haman, after telling him to do all this, the king says, now go ahead and do that to Mordecai. And he didn't like Mordecai. No, he hated Mordecai. <laughs> so he had to do the stuff that he wanted and the stuff that he wished for. Yeah. And he had to do it to someone he didn't even like. <laughs> yes, and if you read the rest of the story, it changed everything. The people were saved. Esther was wow. able to tell the king about bad guy Haman's plans. Wow. And Mordecai became like prime minister of the country. Wow. It's, a t it's such a cool story. It is so cool. And all that because there was a good watchman. That's right. There was a good gatekeeper. There was someone who was willing to sit in the king's gate and just wait. Jenny, yeah. do you want to build Tower with me and then we both be Watchmen Gatekeeper people? Sure, we can play Watchmen Gatekeeper. And you know what else? Yeah. You know, when you're building, you can just say a prayer to God and say, you know, God, I'll be your gatekeeper. <gasps> I would love that. And then, you know what? God will show you sometimes things that you can pray for. And maybe you'll be like Mordecai. <laughs> I want to be like Mordecai. And you'll save the day.
Wow, Aisha, I love the view from up here. Hmm. Did you see my lamp? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was ignoring it because it's daytime, so I didn't want to make you feel weird. My Auntie Casey brought this lamp from me for me from Barbados, wow. and um, she told me a Bible story about it, about the ten brides. Oh, do tell. Yeah, they had lanterns or lamps like this one, Ooh. and they had oil in them, and they had to keep them filled until Jesus came for the wedding. Oh. I'm a bride. Okay. Um, I'm a bride. Aisha. I'm a royal bride. A Aisha. Yes. Um. That's a, such a, a, great, a great story, really. I appreciate your auntie and this lamp, um, but I don't understand. <laughs> what do oil and brides and Jesus have to do with anything? The story about the 10 brides is Jesus told them, okay, little Andrew, to have their lanterns filled with oil in preparation for his return for the wedding party. Wedding parties, I love wedding parties! Sounds like reality TV to me, go it's on. It's a reception, okay. And so what he said to them is that there were 10 brides who um, had to keep, like I said, their oil burning and then and their lamps full. And so what happened was five of them ran out of oil. <gasps> but I don't, because mine's electric. And so, Five of them, they ran out of oil and then Jesus came back and so they were like not ready, you see, little Andrew. And so they had to go um, begging for oil from people. And they didn't have oil because they all used it on their french fries? And their banana plantains. Oh. Mm -hmm. But you want to know the best part? What is it, Aisha? The five brides who didn't run out of oil were invited into the party. Really? Oh, yes. Okay, so it seems like oil is very important. It gets it you invited is. to parties, but um, mm -hmm. what does the oil mean? He just wants oil for oil's sake? Well, no, um, the oil means something else. It means oh. that you have to keep praying oh. and worshiping mm -hmm. and singing like I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just so that you're prepared and ready for the return of the King, King Jesus. He's, he's, he's the best. Oh my gosh. So if I have enough oil, I'll be invited to the party with the best of the best. Right, Aisha? That's right, little Andrew. You'll be invited into the party. Party! Woohoo! Yeah. What? Well, wait. Um, you'll, Aisha, be, you'll be invited with the brides. Little, little problem there. What? I, What's that? I seem to um, not be a girl, so I can't be a bride. Oh. You know, little Andrew, mm -hmm. that's okay. My Auntie Casey explained that part to me already. Oh. It doesn't matter that you're a boy. Really? No, it's just that we're all considered the bride of Christ boy or girl, boys and girls. Oh, that kind Don't worry, it's great. It's gonna be fun. Just keep your oil burning and waiting on the Lord, okay? Okay, um, I'm gonna ask some questions uh, about this whole bride thing. I'm still a little bit confuzzled, but thank you so much, Aisha, I appreciate it. You're welcome, little Andrew. Hi, boys and girls. I have something so exciting today. I can't wait to share it with you, but first, Hey Jenny! Hi! What are you doing here? Well, I heard you were making my favorite dessert. It's not because there's cream on the table? Well, cream and sprinkles is a good draw. That's what I thought. You see, you came to join me because you want to eat the cream and the sprinkles. Yes! Hmm. <laughs> Well, it's good to have you, Thanks. and I am doing something special today, and something that I think children you're going to really be excited about. Today we're going to make Jello. That's right, we're going to make Jello. I'm so excited. Jello is the best. Is. When I was little, Jello was like the super duper treat in our house, and I never got it like every day. It was something very special. How about you? You know what? Jello was something we would have on birthdays. 
Ah. Like special occasions. With sprinkles? Well, sometimes it would be with ice cream. Okay. Together in the same bowl. Whoa. Isn't that amazing? A lot of sugar, Jello but it was a lot of fun. And ice cream. <laughs> right. That's the best. <laughs> Well, how do you make it, Pastor Sarah? Well, we need quite a few things. We need hot water, and boys and girls, you need to make sure your parents help you because it's going to be very hot. And a little bit of cold water. We need some ice because we're going to make the jello really fast. I'm giving you a faster recipe because, Jenny, usually jello takes a long time to be ready. Yes, I remember as a little kid, it would be about six hours in the fridge and you'd open the fridge yeah. up and it still would be all watery and you'd have to wait a little longer. But this is the fast recipe. This is the fast one. It's still going to take some time though. You're still going to have to wait a little bit, Ooh. but not as long. And actually it's interesting because today we're talking about waiting and about how good things come to those who wait for the Lord. That's right. When I wait on the Lord, sometimes I feel His presence, and I love that. How about you, Pastor Sarah? You know what? Sometimes when I ask the Lord for something and I wait, He shows me some amazing things. Like, He really shows me how to be a better person. Wow. Yeah. Well, can you show me how to make Jello? So first, we need a sachet of Jello powder. All right. And actually, in England, where I'm from, we don't use powder. We use these little uh, squares of hard jello. It's, it's like, it's really hard to explain. It looks like a puzzle. And you, you break all the pieces off and you put it inside. Whoa. But this in Canada, we use powder. So I don't know, boys and girls, where you're from. Maybe you have the one that I have in England, or maybe you have the powder like they have here in Canada. I don't know. Well, maybe they even have it in a can. That's true, too. So you just need to have the jello, whatever it is you use, ask your mom and dad. This is the powder one. And I got red because red is one of my favorite colors. Whoa, Revive Nation's red. I love it. I love so it. So I'm going to open the packet and I'm going to pour it into the bowl. Okay. And you see, it's, it's like a powder. All right. It doesn't look very special right now. No. I mean, you can see it's red, but you can't really eat that. It's no, not very special. No, if you ate it, it would turn your tongue super red. I know. Oh, you've tried that, right? Mm, don't try that at home. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to take some water and we're going to fill up half a cup. In here, it's going to be about half a bowl. Okay. Oh, wow, look at that. It's so beautiful. But now it looks like kind of water, like red water. Do you think you can eat that? Well, you could probably eat it, but why would you? Well, it wouldn't be much fun. If you eat it, then you have no jello to eat later. That's true. You could drink it, but then it would be all gone. Yeah. It wouldn't be. And you wouldn't no be able good. to put uh, cream and sprinkles on it. That's right. So it's worth waiting for. Very much. You have to mix it for one to two minutes because the powder needs to dissolve into the water. Can I help? Of course. All right. And it has to be hot water, boiling hot water with a kettle, because otherwise the granules won't dissolve. And if they don't dissolve into the water, then we don't have any jello. Well, then you have crunchy jello, which is disgusto. That makes me think too how important it is to follow instructions. Yeah. Right? The gatekeeper that we've been talking about, they have to stand on the wall and they have to look and see when the enemy is coming. There's certain instructions they have to follow, otherwise they won't be able to help the city to stay safe. You're right. In fact, when I was in the army, we had to listen to every instruction. And if you didn't, you were in a lot of trouble mm. because it was so important for all the soldiers to follow all the commands always. Following the instructions at all times kept everyone safe. In fact, that's why learning the Bible is so cool because when you learn the instructions, all the people who love God all over the world are all following his instructions at the same time. It's amazing. Did you have an instruction from the Lord or a memory verse that we could learn today, Pastor Sarah? Actually, I do. And it's from Lamentations 3, 5. And it says that the Lord is good to those who wait for Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him. Well, why don't you do the next step and I'll work on trying to memorize that. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. Let me try it again. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. Now is that if, right? That's good, but if I do the next step and you still remember it, 
that, that shows that you really remembered it. Boys and girls, now we're going to take the ice and we're going to put all of the ice into the jello. As much ice as you can fit inside your bowl. And Sister Jenny, while I'm doing this and waiting for the ice to melt and stirring the jello, maybe you can try and practice the verse again. This See is whether... so cool, it's like a science experiment. Oh, that's right. It is. Science. I love it. Okay, so you want me to try it? Yeah, try again. Okay, so, Lamentations 3. Kids, you gotta help me out. 3. 25. Okay, ready? Um, the kids are gonna help me out, okay, Pastor Sarah? All right. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him. That's really good. Yeah? Do you have it at home? Let's hear it. That's exactly it. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him. That's super cool. And I'm waiting for the ice cubes to melt and they're getting smaller and smaller, which means that they're starting to melt. Amazing. And then after you have those ice cubes melt away, what's the next step, Pastor Sarah? The next step is we have to put it in the fridge. Okay, so we'll wait and you guys go ahead and get your powder and your ice cubes and make sure mom or dad or auntie or uncle or grandma, whoever's with you, does the kettle part, okay? And it's one cup of boiling water. It's one cup of boiling water. And one cup of ice cubes yep. with one package of jello. Yep. Make sure you mix the jello with the hot water first and get some help because that hot water could burn you. So we want you to be safe. And then after all those ice cubes are dissolved, I think you put them in the fridge. Did I get it right, Pastor Sarah? That is right. And then we're going to come back after when it's ready and we're going to decorate it. Whoa. With and the cream and the sprinkles. And eat it too. But you have to wait. Oh. Are you going to be okay to wait? Okay. I'm okay Are to you wait. sure? Yes. Okay. Yes, because the Lord is good to those you who wait, wait for, for him. him and maybe to those who wait for Jello. That's, that's good. <laughs> I think so. All right, we'll be right back, children. One hour later. Is it ready yet? Oh, Jenny, you've been so patient. You is know it? what? It's ready. Yes! Here it comes. Wow. Look how nice that is. That's gorgeous. And you see, it's not runny anymore. No, it was like goopy droopy right. and now it's perfect. It's like water, but now it's jello. I love it. And is it time for whipped cream? It is. This is the best part. This is the best part. This is where we decorate it so and then we get to eat it. When you say decorate, do you mean just put all that whipped cream and sprinkles exactly. on it? <laughs> And I, did you want to do this? <laughs> you look like you're having a lot of fun. I really don't I want to take this so fun away happy. from you. <laughs> and and how many people do you think could enjoy this bowl of Jello? Well, that really depends, Jenny. Like, how much will you eat? Oh, just one bite. Just one bite? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because Are you sure? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. you're you're willing to share it? I will share it okay. all. All right. Okay. So is it ready? Does it look pretty? Is it, it looks, beautiful? It looks very pretty. But you know what? I think we need more sprinkles. Well, I just happen to have sprinkles. Okay, say when. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's amazing. I can't believe it. That's a lot ready? of sprinkles. Are you good, ready? Good things come to those who wait <laughs> on right. the Lord and on Jello. <laughs> Bye, kids. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord.
Hi, Zara. I like that song. That's one of my favorite songs. Hi, Pastor Zara. How are you? I am very blessed and highly favored. How are you? Oh, that sounds really good. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm having a problem. Hmm, what is your problem? Well, you see, um, I'm supposed to be fasting, fasting. and, uh, my mommy said, uh, don't eat junk food. And so I thought I would just open one bag of chips and just have one chip, like instead of a whole bag, you know? And I opened the bag and it exploded! And then I had to eat all the ones that exploded because I didn't want to waste. Right, and then true. I opened another one mm. so I could have some later. Mm. And then, well, as you can yeah. see, I'm having a hard time. Well, I know what it's like when you open a bag of chips. It's really hard just to eat one. It's really hard to not eat the whole bag. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm wondering, like, do you know what fasting is? Uh, I think it's starving for <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, Zara, that's not what fasting is. Would you like me to tell you? Yeah, because I'm not doing a good job of it. Well, I can give you an example of a story in the Bible of a queen called Esther. Can we eat chips while you tell the story? <laughs> if you want. <laughs> oh, okay, but I think I'll get in trouble as so I better not. <laughs> you know, Zara, it's really important that you understand what fasting is. It's really hard to fast if you don't understand why it's important. Okay. So, in the Bible with Queen Esther, she was a queen. A queen? Yeah, you like queens. Oh, I wish I had my yeah. tiara, because then it would yeah. be perfect. She was a beautiful queen. Like me? Yes, like you. And she had a very important job to do, because her people were in danger, and she had to save them. Okay, did she save them with a gun? <laughs> no, she didn't save them with guns. But you know what she did? She believed in God. She had faith in God. And she went and prayed to God. And she I prayed to God. You prayed to God? Yeah. Good. And she decided to, to call a fast for three days. And not just her, but the entire nation. Her nation, her people, they fasted for three days. So they were starving for God. See, well, I told you, it means starving for God. You know, Esther understood what fasting was. She understood it wasn't starving. She understood that when she fasted, that God was listening to her prayer. And because of her sacrifice, God made a way. You mean, you mean when you fast, you're supposed to starve and pray? Well, when we pray, God gives us strength and we don't even feel hungry when we're praying. Pastor Sarah, I feel hungry when I'm starving. Right, but did you pray today? Uh, no, I was too worried about what my mommy would say mm. when she found out I ate a lot of chips. Right, and so Esther was praying when she was fasting. And there was a very important reason why, because she wanted to go and see the king and it wasn't easy to go and see the king. In fact, if you didn't have an appointment and you went to see the king without an appointment, you could get into a lot of trouble. Oh, that sounds like when I went to Mr. Principal's office without an appointment right. and he sent me back to class right. and my mommy got a note mm. and I got in trouble. Right, so Esther, she really wanted to make sure that she could see the king because he was the only person that would be able to help her and save her people. And so when she prayed and she fasted for three days, do you know what happened? No. God made a way that she not only saw the king without permission, and he wasn't angry with her, but he even showed her favor. Wow, what does that mean? Well, favor is when you give the person the desire of their heart. So he said to Queen Esther, whatever your heart desires, I will give you. You mean she could have asked for a golden pearl necklace with diamonds and emeralds and jewels and a crown and a matching outfit? You know what? I think she could have. I think so. But that's not what she asked for. Well, what did she ask for? She asked the king to save 
her people, her nation, so that they wouldn't get hurt. <gasps> mm. So when you fast and pray, it helps your nation? It helped her nation, it saved the people. And you know something, when she fasted and prayed, it was God that made a way to God. go to the king. God made the way for her. God makes a way when you fast and yeah. pray? He makes a way where there is no way. <gasps> I like that. I think I'm going to start fasting and praying as soon as I finish my chips. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know it's really hard to fast, but the fact that you want to try to fast, God sees that. He sees the heart. So, do you think I could start tomorrow and do a better job? Well, is that what you want? Uh... Do you want to please God? Do you want to ask Him to make a way? Yeah. Okay. Is there something that you're praying for? Oh, I'm praying for my friends to know Jesus. Oh. And I'm praying for my mommy and my daddy. And I'm praying for my grandmother. And I think I don't need chips so much. Wow, so now that you're thinking about all the people you're praying for, you're thinking more about them than you are about the chips? Yeah! Wow, so you see how when we pray, we don't think so much about needing to eat because we're thinking about God and God is giving us strength to not eat. Well, Pastor Sarah, you are amazing! And I am going to not eat. Well, mm. I am going to try. Mm. I'm going to pray that God helps me not to eat chips and that I can fast and pray. It sounds to me like you're going to try really hard and that's what's important is that you try your best. Yeah, because you know what we're going to be, Pastor Sarah? What? We're going to be history makers. Yes, we are. Let's sing it. I'm going to be a history maker in this land. I'm going to be a speaker of truth to all mankind. That's you, Pastor Sarah. Oh, Sarah. I love you. I love you too. Can you take the chips out of my shirt, please? I won't need them. <laughs> Yes, sir, I will. <laughs>
Right, and realizing that we can pray and that we can be a gatekeeper for God and make a difference. And that we did a fast too, and so we can't wait to hear what the outcome of these last 31 days were. We hope, kids, you were with your parents. If you missed it, you can definitely follow it on Revive Nation's YouTube channel. That's a great idea. Also, there are links in the description. You must really like that jello. Mm -hmm. I think so. Links in the description, kids, right down below. Do you see? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We want you to join in so you can be fed every week. I think we should close with prayer. Are you up for it? Let's make him pray. I'd love Absolutely. to. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful episode. We thank you for each and every life that has been touched by this episode. And Lord, we know that you are preparing us to be watchmen. You're preparing us to be gatekeepers, that you're sharpening our eyes and sharpening our senses so that when we pray and when we look at people, we can know what to pray. And when we pray, you hear us and that everything that we do and say, you back us up. So we thank you, Father, for that divine backup and for the wonderful time that we've had together as a team and as a family. And with that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We can't wait to see you next week, kids. Take care and stay under the hand of our almighty God. Bye. Bye.